Welcome to Ella's Beef Easter's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Just fascinated with all the various TV shows and newspaper columns now. All the magazines devoted to all the, the suckers and all the deadbeats. We're all concerned now about, oh, I can't make ends meet. I'm getting thrown out of my house. Susie, what am I going to do? <laughs> Boo freaking who? Why would anyone feel sorry for these people? 1-800-5800-TOM. These are our telephone number. It's one 800 866 Jake on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey there, Tom. How are you? First I'm, time I'm doing great. Tom, I had a question for you. I mean, you're talking about uh, finance and people's personal uh, income and whatnot. I was just thinking to myself, you know, I haven't worked uh, for the last, you know, I'm 23. I've, I've never really had a job. And uh, I just recently received a lawsuit settlement. And I, uh, you know, never had a problem with getting into debt before or anything like that, but I've been spending my money really fast. I've already spent three of my $11,000, and I just don't know. Uh, Where did you get this money? From a lawsuit settlement. And why are you spending it? What should I do with this money? Well, well first of all, you shouldn't be spending it. So, like, now I'm able to live, like, a kind of more, uh, able to eat more lunches out. You know, until you until you run out of money. And you shouldn't be eating lunches out. You can't afford that. I can't afford that, huh? No. How much money do you need to have to be able to go able to eat out a fifteen dollar lunch? Uh I would say you need to make at least fifty thousand dollars a year. Fifty thousand dollars a year? Absolutely. Wow. I mean How often do you eat a fifteen dollar lunch every day? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have a job, so I have a lot of free time throughout the day to be, uh, you know, wandering the mall or, you know, just being on. Let's let's Drive let's or... do a, let's do a little let's do a little uh, mathematics here, shall we? Sure. You're spending seventy five dollars a week on lunch. How yeah. much is that per year? So we're looking at uh, 150 dollars, three hundred, three times twelve, thirty six hundred dollars a year. Thirty nine hundred dollars a year. Okay. Almost four thousand dollars a year on lunch. If you have ten thousand dollars from a settlement, uh, you will be uh, through it in about uh, thirty months. So what should I? What, what would you use this money for? If you're my age and uh, you know didn't have much, uh... did you go to school? Yeah, I go to school. You're still going to school? Yeah, I'm behind. I'm behind. Why are you behind? Uh. I used to have, like, I used to use drugs. You used to use drugs. Okay. And so you got off drugs. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, 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 I just sometimes uh, use, you know, not such severe drugs here and there, but uh, I, I, I cut down my addiction. You by cut the down day. your addiction. What were you addicted to? Uh, downers. Right. And now what drugs do you use? No, like on Fourth of July, I uh, took a few bombs of some cocaine, or you know that kind. Do you of really thing. think that's smart? And are you paying for that cocaine, by the way? No, no, I never right. paid for. It. All right. Okay. And let me ask you another question. Uh, do you have any debts? No, uh, you know, I, I never got into debt. I was always too scared to use my credit card. I so you have no student debt. loans? No. No student loans. My parents helped me with school. 
<laughs> your parents help you with school. Well, first of all, if you have no debts and no bills to pay, you should be putting that money away in case you need it. What would, so what would somebody like me need, need money for besides, like, you know, luxuries in life? Like, I can't really see myself. No, I have a car. What if your, parent, car. What if your parents died? My dad drives a Cadillac. My mom drives a gun. What if they die? D-I-E-D. Oh, die. Die. Uh, I don't know. I actually, that's something I uh, brought up with my parents. Uh, what What is going to come to me when, uh, you know, God forbid my parents do pass away? What What am I going to get? That's maybe gonna, Maybe nothing. How so? <laughs> because how much do they have? If my parents live in a $2 million home, I would assume... That doesn't mean money. anything. They could have a $2 million home and a lot of credit card debt. Uh, they could have borrowed against the equity on the house, for example, to help you out. You don't know how much they have. I know, I know. They, they, they don't make it clear. Think how I shocked have. I was when I found out that my dad was worth $80,000. You had no idea. That's what he was worth. 43 years of working. $80,000, including his house. God. You have no idea. You know, I, I, one thing I've noticed... Ever and by the way, you live in Los Angeles. Do you know how many people here um, have leased cars? My car is leased. Well, many people have leased cars, and you see them driving Mercedes and BMWs and Ferraris and what have you. And in many cases, the people don't own those cars. Or how about a lot of people? A lot of people went to Ed McMahon's house, thought Ed was a, a multi-millionaire or a billionaire, and now look. Don't they say it's smarter to lease a car that is uh, worth over fifty thousand dollars? I've never heard that. Because you only lose, let's say, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in three years of driving the car, and then after when you're know, done paying for it, you have nothing to show for it. You do not have an asset. Who wants to drive the same car for after three years anyway? Uh, maybe somebody who can't afford to buy a car. Yeah, somebody that can't afford to buy one. Right, like you. Luckily, you know, at my age, I never had to worry about these things yet, but... Uh, well, it's time to start thinking about them. What if your parents got a divorce? Oh, uh, that'll me. never happen. Yeah, what if it did? What would it happen to me? That, what, did you ever think about that? Yeah. And what, what would happen? Uh, what if they had a big, ugly divorce and they started uh, fighting each other and they ended up selling that house and splitting whatever equity they have? What if they have no equity? No, my parents have moved three or four times in their whole life, and every time they made a profit on their move. I'm not talking about what they did in the past. I'm talking about what happens if they get a divorce. And I don't live in the garage anymore. What will happen then? Oh, dude, you know what? You don't want my help. You know better than I do. You know, you're just arguing with me. You're an idiot, okay? And you're going to find out the hard way, and you deserve everything you're going to get. What's going to happen? You'll find out. Moron. You know, I like your advice, and the guy proceeds to argue with everything I say. You go ahead and take care of it yourself, buddy. Good luck. How about you use all of it to buy Coke? Snort it up this weekend. You just uh, pull, uh, pull a mirror off the wall and start cutting away. Yeah. Go for it. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Dustin on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, bud. Hey. Here's my situation. Um, I've got about, I've got $10,000 credit card debt. And why, I just, why do you have $10,000 in credit card debt? Uh, part of it, part of it was for tuition, and then half of it was for tuition. And I'll be honest with you, the other half was for uh, trips to Mexico I couldn't afford. That was stupid. It was stupid, fun, but very stupid. Um, so I just quit my job about two weeks ago and transferred to another uh, employer. Um, I have about twelve thousand in my four hundred one k from my previous employer. I can no longer put into that account um, for at least another year at my current employer that I just switched to. Um, my thing is, is I just want to... let me guess, you stupidly, without asking anybody who knows better, 
took the four hundred one k from your old job and rolled it into your new job. No, I haven't. I haven't done that yet. Well, don't do that. I'm not, I'm not sure if I can actually do that yet. I, well, then don't worry about it. You roll it into an IRA. Do not roll it into the new four hundred one k. Okay. Do um, not. Don't put it into another four hundred. Do an IRA. Do an IRA. The IRA is the pre is the is the you pay the taxes before you put it into the account, right? It depends on what kind of IRA you choose. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, the fact is that with an IRA, you don't pay the fees you pay with a 401k. And you have many, many more investment choices than you have with the average 401k. Right. I've lost on the 401k significantly. Um, the, the question I have for you is, uh, you know, the, the interest rates and everything and the monthly payments, they're about 300 a month for the credit card debt uh, on top of about 130 in interest. And I, I don't care about the numbers, uh, those numbers. I care about, here's one number I care about. What is the uh, APR on your credit card or the annual interest rate? What is it? 15.9. Well, <laughs> paying off your credit card debt is like getting an immediate 15.9% return on your money. Right. Are you making 15.9% on your 401k? At the current time, no. Well, have you ever made 15.9% on your 401k? I don't even know if that's best. Right. So I think you know your answer. I should take that 401k and just pay off that credit card debt? You will take the 401k and you will move the existing 401k to an IRA. Well, my question to you is should I take that 401k out completely and just pay off that credit card debt completely? No. No. <laughs> no. Because in order to take that money out, uh, you will have to pay, uh, first of all, a penalty. Right. And secondly, the taxes that you have evaded so far, you'll have to pay them. You'll be lucky to get out with half of the what, what the balance appears to be. If you have ten thousand dollars in your four hundred one k, you'll be lucky to get five thousand. Okay. So don't do that. Don't pay off the credit card debt with not with a four hundred one k. No. Okay. No, because gonna, you're gonna you're gonna pay fifty percent to get the money out. Right, but the relief from that debt is just would be amazing to me. But, but the point is, you're paying fifty. You're paying what now? Fifteen point six percent. You said fifteen point nine. Fifteen point nine percent. So let me understand. You want to pay fifty percent on your four hundred one k to get the money out in order to pay a fifteen point nine percent loan. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> Don't do it. Well, thank you for the advice. That's what I wanted to know. By the way. Uh, how is your credit? Credit's great. I don't. I've never uh, been late. Never. What been is your FICO school. score? FICO's eighty-five right now. It is not eighty-five. Six eighty-five. Oh, six eighty-five. Not good enough. Get it higher. I got to pay off the credit card debt. <laughs> no, you just have to pay on time every month. I do, though. That's the thing. I do pay on time every month. It's because my balances are so far out and the credit cards are are like at their limit that that's the reason my score is lower. Well, that was stupid. It was. Well, when you get your credit cards, uh, your balance paid down a bit, you can call, you, when you improve your credit score, I'd say to over 700, mm -hmm. you will call the bank and tell them you want a lower interest rate or you're moving on. Okay. And that will reduce the burden somewhat. But it doesn't make sense to take a 50% haircut on the money you have in order to pay off a loan that's charging you 15.9% a year. Good advice. All right. All right, thank you for that. Thank you. Boy, oh boy. We have to teach finance in school. It, this is stupid that people have to call a radio program to ask a question like that. 1 800 like this. Tom. Tom. 5 800 Tom. Like this. Like this. 866. Tom. Like it. It's the Tom Like It Show. Yes, it is. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. Here we are together again on the radio with you and me. Jeff is calling from his cell phone. He's in the parking lot at Dodger Stadium, which can be a full-time occupation. Hello? Hey, Tom. Hey, you're giving out uh, good financial advice, but you need some yourself. Uh, I've heard you in the past say you're going to support Barack Obama. I am. Tom, you're looking at 200 to 300 grand a year out of your pocket. Every well, year. first of all, that, that's assuming that Barack Obama is running for dictator, uh, which he's not. Well, He's running for president, and it doesn't matter what his opinions are or what he says on the campaign stump. 
whatever he wants to do has to be approved by Congress. And uh, the more outrageous things that he proposes will not be approved by Congress. Tom, Democratic Congress, are you kidding me? Oh, come on. It's Democratic by a hair. No, they're going to pick up seats in both houses. He's going to uh, raise your marginal uh, federal tax and... My, yeah, I, you know, I, I have said this to you before, Jeff. There's two ways of being taxed. Uh, there's the obvious way where they tell you a percentage is being taken out of your paycheck. And then there's the insidious way we've been taxed for the last eight years where you are uh, paying less on your income tax return, but the dollar is a joke. Well, so you are being taxed insidiously. And by the way, if you want to see how much you're being taxed today, why don't you go to Europe for the summer? Hey, Tom, you and I are in the same tax bracket. We're going to be supporting the deadbeats you're making fun of because... We know, are, not, we are any- not going to support the deadbeats because, again, Congress uh, is not overwhelmingly Democratic, and it won't be. Oh, Tom, they're going to be close to a 60-seat majority in the Senate. And they're going to pick up about 20 House seats. Nancy Pelosi, uh, the, again, the Senate Reid and, and Obama, are you kidding me? We're going to get slaughtered in taxes. They're going to freeze foreclosures. Uh, that's you know, Obama's already said he would do that. It's going to be a nightmare. And you, you know, you're giving out advice for people to save money using coupons and this or that. You're going to take a hit. Like you're not, you're not going to. Believe uh, well, again, John McCain, I, I would not support in a million billion years. I, I would support anybody who runs against John McCain. I'll tell you right now, this is a man who tried to get me fired from my job in Arizona. And the result of that is I will support anybody who runs against him. I would, I would support anybody who runs against him. All right, well, that's a, you're, you're supporting for a different reason. Does it doesn't matter what the reason to... is. It doesn't matter what the reason is. The fact is, John, not, and by the way, I, I think John McCain, uh, speaking completely uh, rationally about him and staying away from my personal experience with him, and I think he's a dishonest, evil individual. Who, oh, by the way, another conservative who cheated on his wife, and uh, in the meantime, he supports all these uh, laws over the years, uh, these conservative laws. Uh, you do know about him cheating on his wife, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, that's fine, because I've cheated uh, on a variety of people, but I don't go around making laws, making other people's lives difficult. All right. I'm just talking from a financial perspective. I think you're, you're underestimating what you're going to be writing in checks. And I, I hope you're right, but I, I don't think you are. I made more money when Bill Clinton was the president with higher taxes than I'm making today. The stock, right. You remember the stock market in the 90s? Who was the president then? Your gross might have been higher, but your tax bill is going to be a lot higher now. I don't I care. What I care about is what I get, the bottom line at the end of the year. What I'm left with, and if I'm making more on the stock market because the dollar is worth more, because interest rates are higher, uh, because the economy is in better shape... Uh, and we're not uh, running all these deficits that we're running and, and running the country into bankruptcy. Uh, I'd rather have it that way. And at the end of every year, you know, when, when uh, Bill Clinton was the president, I made more money. Stock market's going to take a huge hit. Oh, if no, Obama it's not. Elected. How much worse can it get? How much Wait, worse can I? Are you, are you telling me? Are you telling me the stock market is, is going to be worse than it is today? Are you know how bad it is today? It's down uh, 10 or 12 or 13 percent. It can be down 40 or 50 percent. It's happened <laughs> no. before. Now, when did it happen? When's the last time it happened? 1929? Oh. When? In the 70s, the S&P 500 lost half its value. Well. It, it can happen, Tom. Like, under Jimmy Carter, what? check and see what happened over a three to five year period. Well. Anyway. I- I might remind you that Jimmy Carter took office after years of Nixon and Ford, and it's the same pattern that's always been out there. Republicans spend like drunken sailors, and then when Democrats take over and clean up the mess, they're called tax and spenders. That's the way it works. Uh, this is not a political talk show. But that stuff is frustrating. And Yep, I'm voting for Barack Obama. Uh, uh, yes, we need to get the Republican Party out of the White House. For now. Maybe later we need to change it back. But uh, what's going on now is insane. We have no respect in the world at all, at all, at all. That's got to change. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Paul on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How are you, Tom? Great. I just want to say one quick thing in terms of why the country is going down the tubes. 
uh, you know, the credit card, people can't pay their credit card bills and foreclosures and all that. Uh, you recommended a book probably a year, year and a half ago, and I take your financial advice uh, seriously, and I, I do invest, I do save. Uh, you recommended uh, The Millionaire Next Door. I can't, for, I can't remember who wrote it, but uh, people are living way beyond their means, and foreclosures and people who can't pay their credit card bills, it is sad, but they bring it upon themselves. No one is pointing a gun to people and forcing them to get loans that they can't afford. No one is uh, putting credit cards in people's hands. Yeah, there's pre-approved agreements, but you have to fill that application out and send it in order to get the credit card. And even then, when you do that, you have to read the terms in the back that say, hey, if you can't make your $750 payment, you're going to get hit with a 26% interest fee, which is going to kill you if you don't pay it off immediately. And um, if people just take the time, save your money, invest your money, live under your means, don't buy uh, houses that, you know, don't buy a $700,000 house in uh, Canoga Park because, you know, the market is doing really well. Live under your means, don't eat out every single day, cook your own food, um, and you should generally be fine. I mean, people are just spending their money like it's nobody's business. Uh, inflation is, is ridiculous. And, uh, you know, what do you think? Well, I agree with you that people spend too much money. Uh, how about the guy who called in earlier spending $15 a day on lunch? That guy, Tom, that guy, I had to kind of hang, I had to turn the radio off for a second, but that guy, if you just tell him to call your show in one to two years, that guy sounded so clueless that $11,000 of which 3000 he spent, that money will probably be, be gone by Christmas. And, you know, in order for people to move ahead in life. I mean, I love your show. I, I, I agree with you like 99% of the time. People who listen to your show, the majority of listeners of your show, they, they probably don't have more than $500 in a bank account. And if they do, it's going to be gone within a month because uh, I make, you know, pretty good money. I do my best. I, I, I read, you know, the journal. I read Morningstar.com. Again, that was the advice that you've given. Um, it's not that hard to, to to save your money. And when people look at their daily expenses, I mean, you don't need to buy uh, TurboTax or, or whatever it's called to manage your expenses. Just live under your means. I mean, one of the little things that I read, people like Warren Buffett, and uh, he he buys his suits at J.C. Penney. He doesn't buy his suits. He doesn't buy a $7,000 Brioni suit. Have you uh, seen Warren Buffett's glasses? He's got frames from the 70s. Yeah, there's a reason for that. And if I, I, I'll hang up, Tom, so you can get some more calls. But if I can just ask one question, which I've always wondered about. Yeah. Uh, I, I love, again, the advice that you give and everything, and, and I completely respect everything you say. When you pass on one day and, and, and you move on to better, greener pastures, all the money that you've accumulated and saved, I've just always wondered what you plan to do with that, because I know that um, it's... You know, it's yours, and you've earned it. You've earned every single penny. And I know how you are with family, and I'm sure you have a lot of, quote-unquote, friends who, you know, maybe want some of that. Or uh, How are you going to protect your assets, and who are you going to pass it you on mean, to? When I, when I, well, uh, and I've started, talked about this on the air before. Um, I do have some family members I, I do care about who have been good to me over the years. And uh, friends and some people who have helped me out my career. And I have a couple of charities I care about. Uh, you don't have to go out breeding and then give the money away so there can be another generation of people buying Hello Kitty merchandise. I have no yeah. interest in doing that. Okay. Uh, Tom, have a great week. Can you please take me out Kobe style and then blow me up and have an awesome, awesome week. Take I care, man. certainly can, Paul. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Uh, uh, uh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Brian on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing great. Nice, nice. Yeah, I actually called up because I got a couple tips for your listeners out there. I went through a bankruptcy. It's been about two years since it's discharged and been trying to uh build up my credit and everything so um a couple of things i did one 
one thing that helped me out significantly was having a uh, family member authorize me as a user on her uh, credit card. Uh, she, it, it's a good standing credit card, no late payments or anything like that. She's had it for a couple of years. I think it was like a fifteen thousand dollar ba- uh, limit, and she's only got like fifteen hundred dollars uh, balance on there. And so, you know, kind of like that would look good on a credit report. And so, as soon as she authorized me as a user on her credit card, um, it jumped my score up fifty points. That's true. Although they are talking about eliminating that because there are people. If you can imagine this. There are people who are brokering that business, like your your sister let you sign on. There are complete strangers who, for a fee, will let you become the co-signer of their credit card. And there are middlemen who are brokering those deals. And the uh, credit reporting agencies have become hip to the jive, and I think uh, eventually they're going to take that away. No kidding. Yep. Oh, that sucks. See, I heard something about they're not going to recognize those for home loans, but... For car loans and other things, I, I didn't think it was getting get in the way, but I haven't heard anything about well, that. Well, I, I think that's where it's heading. Right, right. But for now, that's working for you, and that's good that you did that. I, that I'll tell you what, if you were my brother and he, you were fi- you had filed for bankruptcy and asked me to do that, I would say no. Oh, well, you know. So you're it, lucky it, your it, sister did that for you. That's uh, quite a sister. That was actually my cousin, but you know, cousin, the, only ri- okay. the only risk that that person would take is the risk that I'd take that account number and, you know, charge stuff on their account, which would just be screwed up on my part. But would be, but you already had a bankruptcy, so you've done some screwed yeah. up things already. That's true, that's true. So a couple uh, a couple other things I did. Um, I had a car loan after the bankruptcy, you know, I went out and got a car, and um, 21% interest on it. Mm-hmm. So uh, I ended up taking a loan out of my 401k because the loan, uh, and I didn't take the money out, you know, permanently in my 401k. I, I took a loan out of the 401k. And that only accrued like a 8% interest. Well, it, it costs you more than that, and let me tell you why. When you take a loan on the 401k, uh, the administrator of the 401k sells off the mutual funds you've invested in uh, to make that cash available. So you will lose whatever you might have made on the 401k during the time you've had that loan. So you not only pay the interest... But if the stock market goes up, you will miss all of the gains in the stock market during that time. Yeah, I understand. I don't earn the interest on that money that's taken out, but I, I think it so. It, t- it costs more than seven and a half percent. I mean, the, the, the bottom line is uh, that borrowing from your four hundred one k is a last resort. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, again, you know, it was just the seven percent interest. There was no penalties or anything because it wasn't like I was taking the money. By the away. way, the seven percent interest doesn't that come out of the four hundred one k? Uh, well, it, how I, do you it pay it? Yeah, I basically, as I pay back the loan to the four hundred one k, you know, I'm paying a little, mostly principal and a little bit interest. But uh, does any of that interest come out of the four hundred one k? What do you, What do you mean interest come out of the four hundred one k? Well, let's say there was ten thousand dollars in there and you borrowed a uh, thousand. Now you got nine thousand in there and you owe a thousand plus the interest. Uh, right. Does the interest well, come out of when you write a check, or does the interest come out of the four hundred one k? Oh no, no, the interest is just a, a, an addition. It basically gets added to the amount that I pay back. Okay. And then um, I did have one other thing I, uh, that I did. Um, I basically, you know, I, I went. I actually went through a company, and I think they're called Lexington Law or something, and they they would dispute a bunch of the items that I had on my credit report. And but, 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 but let me let me ask you a question. Did they dispute items that you knew to be true? Uh, both true and false, yes. Well, that, you know, that's my understanding of that, and I'm not a lawyer, is that that's illegal. Well, the, the, the way they go, yeah, they're, they're pretty funny. I, I wouldn't suggest... You're not, supposed to do, you're not supposed to dispute things on your credit report that, right, right. that, well, you, that you know to be true. Well, e- e- that's fraud. Well, even a lot of the things that were true might have slightly been off, like dollar amounts, by a little bit. Um, yeah, but, but you also to- you disputed things you knew to be true. Oh yeah, no, I it's I, illegal. I, I, I know it's probably not the best thing to do, or, or the morally correct. And let me guess, you did it. You did it so that while the the bad things were taken off your credit report, you applied for other credit, I, right? Uh, 
No, I didn't. I didn't That's really the reason why people do that. Uh, the reason why people do it is they get they improve their credit score for a few weeks so they can get a credit card or so they can get a mortgage. Oh yeah. And then is that what you did? Well, I, I do want to buy a house eventually, but I'm taking my time. I'm trying to do things right best I can. By the way, you're in no position to be buying a house. Uh, you're not no. even close. Well, yeah, probably not. You're not. No, no, not probably not. You are not even in the ballpark. You're not even in the zip code of the ballpark. Really? Even if, You're not even in the if, same state as the ballpark. Even if I could afford the monthly payments and the taxes and everything? You can't. You can't afford that. Have you paid all your debts off? Well, everything was included in my bankruptcy, so I really don't have any debt. You don't have any debts at all? Just my car loan. Right. And, that's and what, kind of, what kind of interest rate do you think you're going to get on a mortgage after you were bankrupt? Um, probably not the best interest rate. I, I not the best? <laughs> Have you been reading about how tough banks and mortgage companies are being now? Oh, really? You haven't yeah. heard about that? Well, uh, just, a, uh, just about a month ago, I, I was kind of looking into it and uh, uh, some loan companies. Son, let me, me ask you a question. How much money do you have in savings? Uh, just a couple thousand dollars. It's slowly building up. Uh -huh. And let me ask you another question. Well, if you were going to buy a house, what's the cheapest house you think you could get? You know what? I'm only approved for about a $175,000 loan, so I'd be getting a fixer-upper one-bedroom condo in Santa Ana. <laughs> and what kind of investment do you think that is right about now? Um, well, it's, you know, something I would hold on to. I, you oh, know, yeah? Support. You'd like to live in Santa Ana for an extended period of time? Uh, I've I've come from some pretty rough neighborhoods. So. I didn't say you where you've come from. I I came from the toughest neighborhood in America, but I don't want to go back to the toughest neighborhood. Uh, no, I hear you. I hear you. Well, I just think uh, you know. I just think of it this way, and, and tell me your opinion. I'm glad to hear it. Um, you know, paying rent is not kind of like throwing money away. When no, you're not in your mortgage. case. No, because you can't afford a house. You can't afford a condo. Because a condo costs a lot more than a mortgage payment and the taxes. You have to pay for insurance. You have to pay for all maintenance. You have to pay for any repairs that need to be done. The cost is way more than you know, son. You've never owned property before. And trust me when I tell you, when the toilet overflows, the super is not coming. Yeah, yeah I hear you. I hear you. You don't know. Don't do something stupid. Well... It's not something I was planning on do doing within the... You, within the you shouldn't even be thinking about it. No? By the way, $160,000 condominium? Is that what you said? Yeah. $175,000. $175,000. Uh, if you have to put 25% down, you know how much that is? Quite uh, More than I have. I know that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's over $40,000. It's about $44,000. You don't have $44,000. You don't have $4,000. No, but, there, you know, the, like I said, the, the loan people that I was talking to were trying to get me into... Um... Haven't you been listening? Hey, what? Dude, listen to me for a second. Haven't you been listening to what's happening now ever since all these mortgages have been going underwater? Well, yeah. What's been happening? Haven't you been hearing that many of the people who write these mortgages have been overzealous... That they've given mortgages to stupid idiots like you who don't know what you're doing? Uh, and you hadn't heard about that? that? Word hadn't gotten around about that? But doesn't, it, doesn't it boil down to, like, what you could afford a month? You can't afford... No, it doesn't. It, it, it boils down to whether you can afford the whole thing. Um, I, I'm just saying, I'm, I think I make enough Do you even know how much the property taxes are in a place like that? No clue. Huh? No clue. Right. That's my point. Do you know how much the insurance would be? Um, no, but... If I mean, there but... were an earthquake, what would happen to your condominium? If there was damage, what would happen? Hopefully the earthquake insurance coverage would cover it. Guess what? You know what the deductible is on earthquake insurance? Ten grand? I don't know. No, no. It's generally about $100,000. Right. You'll be bankrupt a second time. <laughs> You're laughing. What are you laughing at? Oh, no, I mean... I, you I, I you it, show I me it. earthquake insurance with a deductible of less than $100,000. Show it to me. Really? That's how much it is? You show it to me. Yes! 
I don't know. Yeah, I, you I do, but you see what I'm doing. I've right. undressed you here. You know nothing about owning real estate. Nothing, nothing. You know nothing. All you know is that another overzealous mortgage broker is telling you you can afford this. You can't afford it. Right, right. You I cannot and will not be able to afford it this year, next year, or the year after. So forget it. All right, all right. You I can't can. afford it, and you're not going to do it. Definitely having a done my research i know that you I haven't done any research you know nothing about this nothing all right i'm just, I'm just saying i know what i could afford a month no basically. but but you don't know how much it costs well um you know there, there's uh calculators and everything on the internet no all you know is how out. will you stop being such an idiot all you know is how much it costs to pay back the loan you don't know the cost of ownership you don't uh, know. There's, there's mortgage calculators on the... Um, I'm not the talking about a mortgage, you idiot! That includes the, it no, includes the taxes. Forget it, no. It, it, does it include when the toilet gets clogged? Which of these mortgage calculators include clogged toilets? Yeah, what, what's mean, the it, website for that? Uh, bizrate.com. Oh, stop it. Bizrate, no, it is not bizrate.com, you idiot. Bizrate.com is where you go and you want to buy a washing machine and it compares prices, you moron. Holy crap, you're thinking of bankrate.com, you jerk. Tom like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. The Tom Like It Show. 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. It's Angel on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Uh, hi, Tom. Well, I guess, um, you know, in 12 days, I'm going to be turning 18, and I'm uh, about to head off to college. And um, I know sh- you know squat about finance. You know, they never taught anything of that, of that caliber at high school. And I was just uh, wondering if you could give me um, anything, like, uh, about how to maintain a steady financial status and, um, you know, not a lot of debt and then anything of that sort. The only debts you should have uh, as an 18-year-old are... A student loan if you can't afford to go to college. Mm-hmm. And perhaps a car loan. That's it. Okay. Uh, yeah, just, no credit card debt. None. None. Okay. Yeah, just I was I was like, uh, I was listening to your radio and I got really scared about that cocaine moron. And I was like, oh, I hope that that's it. I don't, I don't end up like that. So I was just calling. Well, that's, that's what I would recommend to you. No credit card debt. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, I get to Lacey Peterson? Well, that would be tasteless, of course. Hammer! Hey! Hammer! Hammer, Mr. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Val on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. This is Val. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great, great. I just, uh, I mean, uh, I wanted to talk to you about my, this is my first time. I'm so excited about this. I've been listening to you for quite some time, uh, and I really look up to you. I didn't expect to get through, but I really, really look up to you. I know I just have about four minutes, so I'm going to get to business here. Uh, uh, just wanted an A on my report card from you. I know you rarely give an A, but I'm going to kind of tell you a little bit about me. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree uh, from India. Uh, I'm going for my second bachelor's in uh, economics, hopefully from UCLA. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, and uh, I, I try, try my best to live off of every other paycheck that I make, irrelevant of what my income is. So uh, in about uh, four years that I've been here, I've saved about 40 grand. So that's that's going well. As far as my work is concerned, um, I I'm a six sigma yellow belt. I I'm just about to become one of the youngest uh, six sigma green belt project lead for my company. So uh, that's that. One thing I wanted to ask you uh, is obviously what do you think about this one? And second is uh, I'm planning to get an MBA, but uh, from either from a UCLA or a USC. And one thing that's stopping me is I uh, did some research, found out that. The average age of the students is about 28 of the applicants. And with my income, it would not be the greatest investment. What do you think? Well, uh, I do think you should save as much as possible. Live as far beneath your means as you can afford. 
and uh, right. try to have as much in savings and as little in debt as possible. But right. it's, uh, you know what, if, if you get nothing else out of what I'm saying, it's that simple. They are, these are the things that are important, and I think you need to remember those. And they, really, they, they, they outweigh everything else you do. If you can just do that, you're going to be ahead of 90% of Americans who are a bunch of morons till they learn the hard way. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. You got that? Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.